That should be all our goal. We should want our Lord to be satisfied with us, should we, for Him. Be satisfied. Tell others about Him in our daily lives as we live. Let's all stand. Let's worship together. Turn around and welcome each other. Let's sing, I love you, Lord, everyone. How about? I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy my key in what you hear may it be a sweet sweet sound in your ear let's sing it again let's sing it to the Lord I love you Lord and I I lift my voice to worship you, oh my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you about that name Master Savior Jesus like the fragrance after the earth proclaim 
pass away but there's something about that name let's sing it one more time to you Jesus 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 there's just something about that name Master Savior Jesus the fragrance after the rain Jesus 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim kings and kingdoms will all pass away but there's something about that name gentlemen if you'll come to receive this morning's offering Let us pray. Father, we're truly blessed beyond measure, and the blessings have certainly come from you. Father, we know truly that each blessing you've poured upon us is an expression of your love. Father, we take time to give tithes and offerings for expressions of our love to thee. Father, for we truly know that you've blessed us. Father, we ask today that you take these tithes, these offerings, you bless the gift and the giver as it goes forth to do thy work to spread thy name here in this community. May we be good stewards of what thou hast given us and expressions of love for thee and to others round about us. For it's in thy name we pray. Amen. I know I heard you loud and clear So I followed through But somehow I ended up here I don't want to think I may never understand That my broken heart is a part of your plan When I try to pray all of God is hurt and these four words Thy will be done Thy will be done Thy will be done I know you're but this don't feel good right now And I know you think Of things I could never think about It's hard to count it all joy Distracted by the noise Just trying to make sense Of all your promises Sometimes I gotta stop Remember that you're God and I am not so Thy will be done Thy will be done Thy will be done Like a child on my knees All that comes to me is Thy will I know 
reach out on my knees all that comes to me is thy will be done thy will be done thy will be done I know you see Nothing less and nothing else. All right. If you have a, your Bible, would like to open it please to Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. I have today and then the Lord willing, I have next Sunday. So today I come before you with... Uh, with a message that is very important to my own heart and has been somewhat of a guiding light for me in my years as a preacher of the Word of God. I want to speak today on the title, The Proper Subject, Acts chapter 5 and verse number 42. In the days of the early church, following the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the church was beginning to grow. And we find in verse number 42, daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. The early church, as they worshiped in the temple, and as they met in houses, uh, which today we would call church houses, to worship the Lord, their primary objective was to teach and preach Jesus Christ. I've read that in a town in Sweden, in a little church, there is a crucifix that hangs on a pillar not too far removed from the pulpit. As the pulpit would be here, there's various pillars to give support to the, uh, to the ceiling, to the roof. And several feet out from the pulpit, there is one of these pillars. In 1716, that church had a very well-known visitor. That visitor was their king, King Charles XII. His attendance that day was a complete surprise. And there was a lot of, I'll use the word, there was a lot of chatter among the congregation when he walked in. Well, the minister was so overwhelmed that he decided on the spur of the moment not to preach the sermon he had prepared. Rather, he spent the next 30 minutes, 35 minutes bragging on, paying tribute to the king. A few months later, the church received a package from King Charles XII. In that package was a crucifix. And these were the instructions concerning that crucifix. Please place this crucifix on the pillar 
that stands before the pulpit so that whoever stands in the pulpit and sees this crucifix will be reminded what is the proper subject. I like that. It does not take deep reading and deep meditation when you look at the book of Acts to realize the early church in its inception had only one message. All right. And that message was about a man. And that man was the Son of God. And that man was Jesus Christ. They basically preach the same message over and over and over. And this is the message. That Jesus Christ died on a cross. That he was buried and three days later, God raised him from the grave. Hallelujah. Oh, amen. <laughs> Ain't no grave going to hold his body down. And Jesus arose. And he, and he ministered to his disciples and others. And 40 days later, he ascended to the Father with this charge to the church. Preach the gospel to every living creature. So it was that whenever Brother Paul was converted, and as we Baptists say, gloriously saved, <laughs> He immediately went to the synagogues and began to teach about Jesus. When Paul wrote his letter to the church at Corinth, he said to them, For we determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. When Philip, one of the early leaders in the church, the Spirit of God came to Philip one day and said, Philip, go down toward Gaza, the desert area. God has somebody he wants you to meet. And Philip went down to this deserted area and all at once he saw a chariot coming down the road. And he saw a man who had been up to Jerusalem in worship, now returning back to his homeland. And he noticed the man was reading from a scroll. And Philip went up to him and he said, Sir, do you understand what you read? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me or teach me? And Philip joined that eunuch in that chariot, and the scripture says, and Philip began to teach unto him Jesus. That's the message of the church. The proper subject, oh, let me put it like this. The introduction to the sermon is Jesus. The body of the sermon is Jesus. The conclusion of the sermon is Jesus. And the invitation of the church is Jesus. And the center of our worship is the Holy Son of God. Whew, hallelujah. I want to share briefly with you three things the early church emphasized about Jesus. Number one, he was the Lamb of God. In the Old Testament, God had given orders. When you offer sacrifice for sin, 
when you celebrate the Passover meal, etc., you take a lamb, a lamb without spot, a lamb without blemish, and you take this lamb and you spill the blood of this lamb. And you take the blood and you sprinkle it here and you sprinkle it there. When I see the blood, I'll pass over. When I see the blood, there is forgiveness of sin. So Isaiah came along years later. The Spirit of God began to reveal the truths of God to this, to this city preacher. And Isaiah said, we have been taught that we are to slay a lamb. But God has spoken to me. And I want you to know that the lamb is not an animal, but the lamb is a person. He was wounded for our transgressions. Oh, praise his name. He was bruised for our iniquities. And by his stripes we are healed. And then as the pages of the calendar changed, there came an old country Baptist preacher, as it were, coming down to the river of Jordan. My, he was a straight shooter. Lord, he told people they couldn't be baptized until they proved they was worthy to be baptized. <laughs> he told them about the axe being laid at the root of the tree and God was getting ready to swing the axe of judgment upon the sins of the people. And all at once, he looked down the banks of the Jordan and he saw a young man coming walking down by the waters of Jordan. Oh, I wish I could have been there. John looked, and he saw that young man coming down. John looked at the crowd gathered by him, and he said, Look, now the King James says, Behold. We in East Tennessee might say, Well, looky there. <laughs> looky, who's coming? <laughs> and John said, Look, the Lamb. Our forefathers have been offering the lamb for their sins. But look, here comes the lamb of God. And he shall take away our sins. In the early church, when Peter would write his two letters he would talk about the fact that we have been redeemed not with corruptible things such as silver and gold. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> but we have been redeemed with the incorruptible blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Silver and gold cannot buy our redemption. The blood of Jesus Christ is priceless. All the gold in Fort Knox cannot even make a down payment. Ooh. I was 13 years old, just a few miles from this church, that I experienced the blood. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. To use the language of Scripture, I was washed. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. I'm aware that in our culture today, there are some people who do not, they do not appreciate a bloody faith. I'm aware that in some circles it is no, you won't get very many amens when you emphasize the blood of Jesus. But I'm here today to say to you, thank you God 
that Jesus shed his blood. Thank you, God, for the shed blood of the Holy Lamb of God. I'll preach it today. If I live, I'll preach it tomorrow. And if God gives me an opportunity, I'll preach it in heaven. Holy, holy, holy. There's angels here today. Do you sense that? Do you sense that? We have guests from heaven today. Angels. We sit, we stand, we worship on holy ground today. Oh my. In the book of Revelation, there's 28 references to the Lamb. As you study those 28 references to the Lamb, you become aware of two major points concerning the Lamb. Number one, the Lamb conquers. And number two, the Lamb sacrifices. I want to join those two. The Lamb has achieved victory through the sacrifice of Himself. The Lamb has conquered death, hell, the grave. And He conquered it through the sacrifice of Himself. Amen. Well, the second thing they emphasized, they emphasized, <clears throat> excuse me, especially the writer of John. He emphasized in Jesus, <clears throat> There is life, L-I-F-E. Listen, listen to what the book says. Jesus said, I am come that you might have what? Life. And have it, how? More abundantly. Now if I understand anything about the Greek language, more abundantly means it is life overflowing. My cup runneth over. God did not measure life with a medicine dropper. Amen. God didn't put it on some scales just to make sure that it weighed a certain amount. As I've often said, God broke the alabaster box and poured life upon us. Listen to what John says. We know that we have passed from death unto life. When Jesus saved me, I didn't know it. But before he saved me, I was dead. I didn't know I was dead. I was blind. I didn't know I was blind. I was lost. Now, I knew that I was lost. But when Jesus saved me, I passed from death unto life. And I'll never, never die again. <laughs> Praise his name. Praise his name. Listen. Listen to what John said. He quotes the words of Jesus. I am the resurrection and life. Life. He that believeth in me, though he, though he may die, yet he shall live forever. Listen to what John said in what, chapter 20, verse 31. I've written these things that you who believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have what? Life in his name. Listen to what Jesus said. And I will get, see, in the book of John, oh, my soul, my soul. Calm down here, preacher. Calm down. I can't, Lord, I can't. Oh, my. Listen to this. Listen to this. See, Jesus said, And I will give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Life is mentioned 35 times in the book of John. Out of those 35 times, 16 times, there's the adjective eternal life. Eternal. Listen, when John wrote there in his little epistles, he wrote, and this is the record. What is the record, John? That God has given us life. And this life, now listen to this because this is good. And this life 
is in his Son. He who has his Son, Jesus, has life. And he who does not have the Son does not have life. And you know what abides on those who do not have Jesus? The wrath of God. I'm going to close in just a few moments. Before I do, I'm going to ask the Lord to anoint me. Because when I walk the pages of the New Testament, all I read is about Jesus. In Matthew, Jesus is Emmanuel, God with me. In Mark, Jesus is the Son of God who became the Son of Man so that we who are the sons of men might become the sons of God. Amen. Amen. In Luke, Jesus is the Good Samaritan who always hears the cries when he walks the road to Jericho. And he always goes over to bind the brokenhearted, all right, to set the captives free, to give sight to the blind, and to give life to the dead. Oh, in John, oh my, in John, Jesus is the way. He is the truth, and he is the life. Oh, in the book of Acts, Jesus is the Holy Spirit who comes like the sound of a rushing mighty wind all the way from the very throne of heaven. And He, as the Spirit, He comes to live in the hearts of His children. Oh, in the book of Romans, Jesus is that name, the only name by which I call upon that I can be saved. For Romans teaches me that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made. Hallelujah. And that confession is that Jesus Christ is Lord over all. Yet when I look in the book of First and Second Corinthians, I'm reminded that Jesus is the first fruit. That means he was the first one. He's the first fruit of the resurrection. And because of his resurrection, the gospel is true. Amen. My Faith is real and my hope in Jesus goes beyond the grave. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, when I come there to the scripture in Galatians, I'm aware that he has fulfilled the law. I no longer live un under that law. I've been set free. I live under the grace of my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ and when I read Ephesians I'm reminded he is my armor oh praise his name he is my armor that I can stand against all of the assaults of the devil because I've got victory in Jesus and oh when I come to Philippians oh I'm reminded once again I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and when I come to Colossians, I'm aware that he was before all things. He created all things. And by him, all things consist. And in him is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Then when I come to first and second Thessalonians, yes, first and second Thessalonians. It will be he that shall descend from heaven 
with a shout. With the voice of an archangel. And the trump of God shall sound. And we which are alive shall be called up together in the cloud. And that cloud's going to take us up to meet who? Jesus in the air. When I read First and Second Timothy, I'm aware that he is the only mediator the one and only mediator between man and God. He is the only bridge that spans that distance between a holy God and sinful man. Have you crossed the bridge? Because the only way you're going to meet God and Him accept you is through Jesus Christ. When I come to the book of Titus, I'm reminded that Jesus is my blessed hope. Well, I'm just going to pause for a moment and have me a glory spell, okay? That Jesus is my blessed hope. When I read the little letter of Philemon, I'm aware that he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And when I read Hebrews, oh my, oh my, he's the author and the finisher of my faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He is my one and only, oh yeah, high priest. Mm. <laughs> and he was tempted in all points as I am, but yet he did not yield. I've got a perfect high priest. Oh, glory. And he understands me. Woo, that's a miracle. Did you know that? <laughs> But he understands all of us. And he represents us to our Heavenly Father. And then I come to the letter of James. And James tells me that if I can pray the prayer of faith, my Jesus can heal the sick. And James tells me that my Lord will honor the prayers, the effectual, fervent prayers of righteous people. And then 1st, 2nd, and 3rd Peter, or 1st and 2nd Peter tell me that Jesus is my shepherd. And now listen to this. And the bishop of my soul. And when he shall appear, this shepherd, who is the bishop of my soul, will give me a crown of glory that will not fade away. Ain't Jesus good? And then when I go to first and second and third John, I find out that Jesus is love unconditionally, sacrificially, and everlasting. I can be good, and He loves me. I can be bad, and He loves me. Ain't Jesus good? And then when I look at that little letter of Jude, oh, oh my, <clears throat> some people just slide over that. But when I look at that little letter of Jude, I become aware 
that Jesus is the one who keeps me from falling. And he will present me, now listen to this, faultless, F-A-U-L-T-L-E-S-S, -S, faultless, without sin. He's going to present me faultless in the presence of the glory of God. And he's going to do it. Now, this is in the book. And he's going to do it with exceeding joy. Who knows? He may even clap for me when he presents me to his Father. And then I come to Revelation. Oh, my. Lift up your heads, church. Lift up your heads. I said, lift up your heads. Because our redemption draweth nigh. We're going to soon be leaving this world. Because it's going to burn and melt with fervent heat. Oh my goodness. I ain't going to be here. No way, Jose. Not going to be here. No. I got under the blood in 1953, beloved, and it's going to take me all the way to the throne of God. What more can I say about Jesus? God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, on the earth, and under the earth. And every tongue, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem. I said, bring forth the royal diadem and crown him. Oh, John. We're going to be there, brother. Yeah. We're going to be there. You going to be there? I don't want to embarrass anybody, but the Bible says you always be ready to give a reason of the hope that's in you. Amen. Amen? Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him. That's my Jesus. Crown him. Lord of all. I hope when I die, I'm not all doped up. Nowadays, they got all this comfort care, and I understand all about that. I'm not being critical. But I hope when I die, I'm not full of morphine. I hope I still got a little sense left and a little awareness because the last word I want to say before I die is Jesus. Out of all the words in my speaking and reading vocabulary, that's the last word I want to come from my tongue. And when I wake up in glory, <laughs> don't get ahead of me. <laughs> when I wake up in glory, the first word I want to say in my new body 
is Jesus. If I go to a basketball game, I want to watch them play basketball. Isn't that simple? If I go to a soccer game, I want to watch them play soccer. When I come to church, I want to hear about Jesus. Amen. I want to hear about Jesus. I want to hear them sing about Jesus. I want to hear them pray to Jesus. I want that preacher to preach about Jesus. Because he's the great I am. Oh my, I've got to quit. Let's just sing a song, okay? Let's sing a song about Jesus, okay? <laughs> Amen. And we sang some songs about Jesus. Something about that, that name. The name to which every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Oh my, I'm so glad I was able to come to church today. God gave me health to come. There'll be a time in my life when I probably won't be able to come. Don't have, but what few more opportunities I have, I want to go to church where they talk about Jesus. I want to go to church where they brag on Jesus. I know how bad this world is, all right? All I have to do is just turn on the TV. I know how bad people are. All I have to do is just read a newspaper. Or listen to the local gossip. Oh, my father, did I say that? <laughs> I want to come to church and hear about hope. And about faith. And about positive change. And something's better than what I am now living in. What, what are we going to sing? Jesus paid it all. All right, Jesus paid it all. Hey. All to Jesus I owe. Why? He paid it all. Well, let's just stand. Sing. Testify. Amen. Pray. I Thank you, Jesus. hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness, watch it. Pray, find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Lord, now indeed I Spots and melt the heart of stone. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Let's just take a few moments of silence here. and We're going to be leaving this place in just a moment. Anything else, God, you want to say to us? Our minds are focused on you. And now, may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus, and the fellowship of His Spirit 
live in each one of us. Thank you for Jesus. In his name and for his glory, I do pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.